Hey everybody, this is Andrew Embler, CTO of Portland Labs and Concrete Core Team Leader. Today I'd like to show you one of the largest overhauls we've done to concrete in quite some time, the new version 9 task system. These are jobs in concrete. Jobs are repeatable actions that administrators can trigger through the web interface or through the command line. Beyond this list, these jobs have no user interface. They're just actions that need to be run periodically for certain business cases. For example, there's a job that removes old page versions from a page. Here's another job that re-indexes the entire search engine. As you can see, it runs in a batch. Jobs are not new. They've been around for a while. Here's the automated jobs dashboard page in Concrete 5.6. Since the very beginning of Concrete, we knew there were things you'd need to trigger that had to be long running, so they couldn't really be run from a web browser window. But we didn't want to hide them from non-technical site administrators. We wanted a UI for triggering them in some cases. We also wanted a way for third-party developers to be able to add jobs to their packages, and therefore to the web UI easily. Jobs have their shortcomings, however. First, there really isn't any good logging within jobs. We do have a jobs log database table, but I don't think it's actually being used. If you want to log things with jobs, you have to trigger those logs separately, as you would within any other concrete code. And then if you do that, there's no real way to group all those messages together that happen within a particular job. They just go into the flat log. Jobs also have pretty terrible feedback. Uh, jobs can return a single message when they succeed, um, but if they error out, they can only return a single error. And frequently, jobs will die without returning the valid error, and so they'll just look like they're running forever, when in reality, they ended a long, long time ago. Uh, next, while jobs can be run from the command line, they can't receive command line arguments, and they also can't really log their output to a command line in any useful way. Uh, next, jobs don't provide any history of when they've been run. You can see when they were run last, but, before, but beyond that, there's really nothing you can get. And yeah, like I showed you in the example, jobs can spawn batch processes that iterate over time, but the functionality for doing that and the kind of the way developers can work with that code is pretty limited and definitely sh is showing its age. You can definitely get the sense that jobs were architected and built starting in 2009, and really beyond adding some rudimentary queuing capability to jobs, haven't really been touched much since then. In version nine, we're gonna fix all of those things. These are tasks. Tasks are jobs 2.0, or jobs 3.0, or jobs 10.0. They're that much better than automated jobs. Tasks are built off the Symphony Messenger library included in version nine. If you're not familiar, Symphony Messenger provides a message bus for passing commands and other types of messages around the system. This is mostly something developers have to care about. Messages can be handled immediately or handled asynchronously via some kind of queue. The concrete task system builds off this library with a completely new data structure, the task. Tasks have many advantages over automated jobs. One, tasks work with command messages and handlers, making them much easier for developers to write and test. This is all powered by Symphony Messenger. Two, an integrated task scheduler means you can cron tasks directly from the dashboard in a much more flexible way than you could in the older versions of Concrete. Third, tasks can log their output to logs progressively over time. These logs are separate from Concrete logs. Fourth, tasks can immediately write their output to the console or to the Concrete UI using the open source Mercura library for real-time communication and notification within the browser. Five, tasks can now take arguments, whether through the UI or in the command line. Each one of these argument sets is saved against a particular running instance of the task. All right, let's dig into tasks. First, we're going to configure queue listening. By default, when you run some kind of action that needs asynchronous work to be done, everything just runs in your browser window, periodically sending data to the back end and processing messages. If we configure this to be manual, a separate worker runs on the server processing this stuff in real time. This is more efficient and it allows you to do more advanced configuration, like even spinning up more workers than one to do work more efficiently and using more processing power. So I'm gonna turn this to manual. Next, I'm going to enable task logging. As the message says, make sure to put this 
somewhere outside the web route so that it's not readable <laughs> in a browser. And finally, I'm going to enable the, sched the scheduler. If you do this, you're going to want to schedule something to run on your server every minute so that the concrete scheduler, which bootstraps on top of that, will work. Save my settings. Now I'm going to want to make sure to run this command. This is all just running something, something from Symphony Messenger. I'm not going to run the scheduler at this time, but you can take my word for it that it works. Next, I'm going to talk briefly about server sent events. This is another configuration section of the dashboard. Um, if you're not familiar with it, the Mercure specification is kind of a more structured superset of WebSockets. Um, it relies on a server running somewhere that kind of brokers messages between different applications. Um, I've just set mine up running Docker. Um, it's already running. Um, there's configuration you have to do. Again, you don't have to enable this. If you don't, your application will simply just poll every couple of seconds to see how things are doing. Um, but if you enable this and get it set up correctly, uh, information is sent to your browser in real time, and it's a much nicer experience. So I'll test my connection to make sure everything's running. What this does is it sends a message. Um, it sends a message from my site to Mercure, Mercure, which then basically sends it back saying, yes, everything is running properly. And we've got one message that uh, is sent, and then we have a listener in the, the dashboard for any messages that come back. So we can see that everything is working here as well. Now let's run a task. As you can see, we've moved clear cache up to the top of this. Um, this was more of a proof of concept than anything else because we do in fact have a custom clear cache command, of course, um, for, in the console. And we also do have a custom dashboard page that does this for you. But I thought it'd be kind of interesting to see if we could handle a simple command and command handler from within our task system. So if you click run task. You can see I could schedule this to recur, but I'm going to run it now. And you can see the cache has been cleared successfully. This is just the barest of bones for tasks, um, something that runs a command and executes a, a handler when it exists. Now let's do something a little bit more interesting. The generate sitemap task is interesting here because it runs a simple command and handler, but it does so asynchronously. So no matter how large my site is, this will execute quickly and return. And it says generation of sitemap XML started. And you can see now we're on the activity page. And all of my previous task runs are here. And generate sitemap is here at the top. And if you blink, you might blink and you'll miss it. But it started at the top here and then immediately went to the history because it finished. And if I click on this, you can see I have rich output here. I have generation of sitemap XML started, which was the first piece of output that was returned from this command. And then now sitemap URL available at index.php sitemap.xml. That's a little weird. That looks like a bug, but you get the idea. If I go back to tasks, I can also do more interesting things that work in batches. So let's look at the rescan files command. If I click here, you can see I actually have options here in this task. So if I wanted to scan only files after a particular file ID, or I could limit things as well. Um, I'm not sure if I have a great example of that, but you get the idea. I can always schedule my recurring task using a cron expression, but I can run this now. If I click to run now, you'll see I've been redirected to my activity page and I'm getting real-time output for when this is happening. I can also click up here and you'll see there's an active process list whether I'm on this page or not. So let's try that again. Rescan the files and head back to the website. Now I'm administering the site, but at any time I can see that there are active processes happening. Much nicer than tasks. And now, if I were to go back into the dashboard, that component will go away because there are no active processes happening. Next, let's get a couple things running at once. First, let's do a clear index and rebuild everything for the pages. 
you can see how quickly that happens. I'm going to have to work a lot faster if I want to actually make this example run, run quickly. Let's queue up a few different things. We're going to rescan files and we're going to re-index content at once. Now you can see this is waiting for my rescan files job to complete. And now it's going to run. And again, everything is in sync at all times. One of the nicest aspects of the new task system is the unified input and output system between the console and the web UI. For example, I have this re-index content job, uh, task here. <laughs> For example, I have this re-index content task here. And when I come down here, you'll see I've got task options. I can clear the index before I run this task. I can rebuild it by rescanning all the attribute keys. I can only operate on pages after a certain number, and I can choose which object I want to re-index. If I come to the command line, you can see all of my task console commands are down here, and we have a task reindex content. If I look at this, you can see all of these options are automatically available in both spots, whether to clear, whether to rebuild, whether to go after, and what object to run the reindex against. Similarly, this unification also extends to whether you're running the command or not. Let's run the page reindex from the command line. All the same output is shown in the command line, pipeable to any log of your choice. If I go into my activity, my reindex content shows here as well. And if I redo this and refresh the page, I've got rich output happening within my web interface and within my console at the same exact time. Very, very cool. For a developer, it's actually a lot easier to write an automated task than it was to write an automated job, mostly because we're better developers than we were a decade ago, and so the tools we're giving you are a little bit more thought through. Here is the rescan files controller, which is the accompanying class to the rescan files task. I'm passing in the database connection I need because I'm going to need to retrieve files from the database that I want to rescan. Then I give my task a name and a description, much like we did in the old job system. Next, since my task here allows users to provide input, I have a get input definition method. You don't need to provide this if you don't have input to collect from a user, but this is what allows us to have the unified system between the command line and the web UI. I'm just giving the user the ability to specify after which file ID they want to start rescanning here. Next and last, I implement my get task runner. Uh, if I want to make my task simply execute a command, I could just return a simple command task runner, like in the case of the clear cache command. In this case, I want to actually operate on my input definition, um, which kind of writes a query here and determines what um, files I'm going to operate on from the database. And then I use the batch create method to create a new batch. And that batch is just full of rescan file task commands. And then I return that in my batch process task runner. It's a little confusing and I'm glossing over a lot of details, I realize that. But really the rescan file task command is just a value object that holds a file ID at this point saying, hey, I want to rescan file two, three, four, five, six, etc. And then anytime that rescan file command is run, Symphony Messenger routes that to rescan file command handler, which really just retrieves the file and runs the rescan file method that we already had. So there's a lot of layers here, but really, once you get the hang of it, you're going to be using these tools to build things you never, ever could have in the old job system. Thanks again for listening. I hope this has been interesting. We'll talk again soon.